Welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church, a reconciling and Christ congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We are in Dunedin, Florida. You are most welcome to worship with us here in person or online. I am intern Pastor Ann Harmon and am covering for Pastor Katie Fast, who is on sabbatical. Pastor Tom Osterfield will be presiding today. Beth Kendall is our director of music and Julie Kitchen is our cantor. We start with good news. I am thrilled to announce that on Friday, the candidacy committee of the Florida Bahamas Synod formally approved me for ordination to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament, and I have been assigned to the Florida Bahamas Synod. I will begin the call process as soon as my internship is completed in August. I will forever be grateful to this congregation for welcoming me into the Lutheran faith and supporting me in my preparation for this ministry St. Mark will always be home in my heart. <laughs> Announcements for this week. Our summer campus spruce up continues. This week, the wood under the breezeway was coated. The pavement around the buildings was cleaned. A roofer was here to inspect all the roofs on the property. The good news is the flat roof on the church building can be redone without taking all the wood down. And the main roof on the church is fine. Other estimates of when things will be needed to be replaced have been provided so we can prepare for those future needs. In the meantime, it is safe to walk under the breezeway and the restrooms are open. Uh, summer of prayer, the exam and prayer will meet on Wednesday evening at 7.15 p.m. The Lexio Divina group meets on Monday at 7, both are on Zoom. Uh, back to, July back to school project and pack a sack. We are gathering classroom items for teachers at Discovery Academy here on campus. A pack a sack program provides food for families at risk of food insecurity through the charitable efforts of partnering organizations the total cost for the entire year is $2,640, um, and we're looking for donations to fully fund that and would like that taken care of sooner versus later, if possible. Um, I, my household has committed to um, all of the chicken Vienna sausages for the year. <laughs> Paying for them, and more importantly, finding them. Um, beach Outreach Ministry, uh, the St. Mark Beach Outre Outre Outreach Ministry is seeking new volunteers. They distribute bottles of water to walkers and those fishing along the Dunedin Causeway. Uh, the next walk is on August the 7th, but I hear rumor that they're going to start going out on Wednesdays too. Is that correct, Dan? August 4th, we're gonna try a Wednesday. So if you're interested in midweek versus weekend, again, see Dan Fry and information is in the worship bulletin. Um, Welka at Lake Yale. Uh, so the women of the ELCA are gathering at Lake Yale um, November 12th to 14th and the deadline is August 31st to register for that. I hear that is an event not to be missed. Um, prayer requests for this week. James Lurch, who is covering the front office for us, has asked for prayers for his 14-year-old grandson, Philip Ross, who was diagnosed with a very serious form of leukemia last week. Please keep him and his family in their prayers. Thank you. We take a moment of silence and stillness to prepare our hearts for worship.
please stand with your name. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of silence, the God of stillness, the God of darkness. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abiding presence, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is someone to share. We question your ways and may be in the ways of the world. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of Beloved people of God, we are drawn into friendship with God. Through Jesus, we experience God's love and mercy. By the work of the Holy Spirit, we are called and formed to bring God's presence to the world. Hear this good news. You have received God's mercy and new life for your salvation and the building up of God's kingdom. Be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gesenaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Mark 6, 31. Apparently, ministry has always had the potential to exhaust and deplete. You may not have had the experience of being a pastor, but I am sure you know the exhaustion of work you are passionate about, or the demands of caring for children or aging parents. And I hope you know that the work of your life, the responsibilities that you choose, are your vocation and your ministry to the world. Laying down the responsibility of ministries is one thing, taking time for rest and renewal when you are responsible for someone who is dependent on you for care is a whole other story. Sometimes setting aside time for prayer can feel like one more thing to do on an already exhausting to-do list. But prayer isn't something we daily check off our to-do list. It is the way we grow in our relationship with the one who has created us, redeemed us, and who continues to sustain us in every moment. As we grow in our relationship with God, our life in Christ unfolds and deepens layer by layer. The root of this growth is our life experience brought to prayer, which ultimately bears fruit given by the Holy Spirit. We aren't earning some end game goal or reward. We are invited to experience God's abiding presence. We come to know God. We are invited to fall in love with God. The fruit of this growing relationship is that we are formed into the image of God that we have experienced. And as such, 
we become bearers of God's presence, God's love, God's grace in the world. There are identifiable stages to faith and predictable movements of the Holy Spirit as she draws us further into relationship with God through prayer. As Christians, we often begin our faith journey surrounded by the fellowship and worship of a faith community. Scripture becomes the place where we are first introduced to God as Father, Son, and Spirit. Eventually, our prayer becomes more structured and disciplined. We make time to be with Jesus, to learn to trust God with our deepest needs and concerns. We recognize the gifts and grace we are given, and we grow in gratitude. Our grateful hearts long to give back to God for the gifts received and to share the good news. We want to please God. God. All of these are beautiful moments of growth and the deepening relationship with God. We move through them and return to them throughout our life, led by the urging of the Holy Spirit. Today, I would like to explore contemplative forms of prayer. In today's gospel, the disciples are called away to a deserted place to simply rest with Jesus. It is a beautiful, simple image for contemplative prayer. In contemplative prayer, we are called to silence, stillness, and darkness. Like all prayer, silence, stillness, and darkness are a gift. You can't earn them or create them, but you can open yourself to the reception of God's gifts. I would like to share a little more about these deepening movements of prayer. Silence. The invitation to silence is a paradox. It is in silence where we ultimately learn to hear the voice of God most clearly. As we begin a practice of intentional silence, the demanding voices, needs, and desires in our own hearts become deafening. Eventually, through the, prayer of, through the practice of silence, the competing voices in our heads settle, quiet, and we discover the silent voice of God that has always been present to us. How might we honor God's invitation to silence? By intentionally carving out time in our day that we don't fill with noise, data, news, or other people's stories. We walk the dog and leave the phone and earbuds turned off and walk with God alone. We carve out a few minutes of intentional silence by sitting on our patio with our first cup of coffee in the morning. We take our break at work away from the chatter of the office and just be with ourselves and God for a few moments. Silence presents gifts of awareness as we experience our own interior world and what drives us and causes us to react to circumstances and situations rather than respond to events consciously or graciously. Stillness. If silence quiets the internal noise of our minds, stillness quiets our inclination to protect or defend ourselves and to grasp and hold on to things that are not life-giving for us. Both take away our freedom and enslave us to our own will, wounding, and desires. Stillness is the intentional space we seek to be able to freely respond to the world around us rather than reacting to perceptions. When people are experiencing an invitation to practice silence and stillness, they will often quote Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. 
The Hebrew word for be still doesn't mean silence. There is a specific word that means to not speak in Hebrew. The word translated as be still means to cease from war or battle. Stillness is the practice of controlling our inclinations towards the wars that rage within us and that overflow into our daily lives. What might stillness as a prayer practice look like? Stillness could be intentionally delaying our answers and responses when we notice our feelings of stress, anxiety, or fear. It may mean taking on the practice of questioning why people do things, no matter how irrational they seem to us, rather than reacting to them. It could be delaying an answer to our boss or child until we are sure that we can respond graciously. It may mean walking away from a fight or even embracing an enemy. It could be saying no to more activity or responsibilities. But it is always an invitation to take our most challenging situations to prayer and hand them over to God, intentionally trusting God with the things we want to control. Silence and stillness go hand in hand, and there are ways that we can intentionally cultivate them in our lives. The awareness that we receive in silence and the fruit of stillness are always God's gifts. Darkness. Darkness is God's gift alone. The word in English lacks depth, but it originates in classical spirituality from the writings of the Spanish mystics, from the word obscuro. It is a verb, not a noun, which means to darken, conceal, hide, becloud, to render indistinct, to blind, or obscure. The paradox of this gift is that as we grow in our relationship to God, we are blinded by the light of God's presence. This darkness is hard to understand or even identify. The sweet fruit of this gift is also usually obscured from the one receiving it. But those around them see it in full bloom. Those who have grown so intimate with God as to be blinded by God's presence often see their own human sin with great clarity and look past the sins of, of others with profound grace. They radiate the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Not only is God obscured to them, but their own righteousness and graciousness is also obscured from their own sight. This isn't the place of warm fuzzies from God. This is the place of love at all cost. The beginning of total surrender to God's perfect divine will. In God's darkness, we come to trust and accept that all is in God's loving hands. I have to admit that I have a library of books on prayer covering nearly 2,000 years of the Christian tradition of prayer. And most of what I wrote today remained a real mystery to me until I recognized the fruits of silence, stillness, and darkness fully realized in my mother at the end of her life. She is still my greatest teacher. My mother was always a woman of faith. In the last 20 years of her life after she retired, she spent at least an hour in prayer every day. 
She prayed with scripture. She went to Bible study at church, and she read devotionals. At some point, she added the Liturgy of the Hours and extended her prayer to both morning and evening. She taught Bible study and took communion to the sick. She quietly supported a list of social organizations. In later years, she practiced Lexio Divina and centering prayer. Over those 20 years, there was always a notebook on the table beside her prayer chair in her living room. That notebook is the living witness to her prayer life. She would regularly swap out specific prayers and her list of people and circumstances that she prayed for. My mother moved into a senior care facility three years before she died. Her prayer chair moved with her as well as the little table with her Bible and notebook. But exhausted from trying so hard to keep her independence while the early stages of dementia set in, she never again moved the Bible or the notebook. I have to admit, it bothered me. I wondered if she was angry at God but I never sensed anger from her. For the first year or so, she was able to go to church weekly. Eventually, she couldn't focus on the readings and the sermon and could only treasure receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. She moved to memory care and leaving the facility became too difficult. She now received communion weekly from a minister in her room alone. The Bible and notebook sat more and more buried on the little table. My mom spent the last 30 days of her life in hospice care, fully conscious but completely unable to respond to the most basic question or ask for her most basic needs. Somewhere in those days, I remember one of her caregivers stopping me and thanking me for allowing them to take care of our mom. I must have looked puzzled. She went on to say, your mother never fought or refused our care. She graciously let us bathe, toilet, and dress her. She always had a smile for us and always, as long as she was able, said thank you. She made us laugh. She brought joy to our lives. As I thought about it, I realized how few in her situation are really able to be that gracious. Most project onto the staff or their families their frustration, anxiety, pain, and suffering caused by losing their independence and their health. My mother didn't need to pick up the Bible and the notebook because she was fully enveloped in God's silence, stillness, and darkness. In these years, this fiercely independent woman surrendered her own will and embraced her circumstance, trusting that God was abiding with her. This Celtic prayer was the last prayer she printed out and taped in her notebook. I weave a silence onto my lips. I weave a silence into my mind. I weave a silence within my heart. I close my ears to distractions. I close my eyes to attractions. I close my heart to temptations. Calm me, Lord, as you stilled the storm. Still me, Lord, and keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. 
My mother not only knew the peace of Christ fully realized in her life, she was that peace and light for those who cared for her, even as she slipped away into the arms of God. I pray to one day be that graceful and that grace-filled. Amen. Redeemed by Christ and nurtured by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love, mercy, and justice, and to bring your presence into the world. Hear us, O God. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures, and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. And protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. We pray for all those whose lives have been altered by drought, fire, or flood. Hear us, O God. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O oh God. Your Heal your people, O oh God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, 
and all who live in fear of violence, starvation, or war. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort though to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. We call to mind those we love who are in need of God's healing, grace, and mercy. Hear us, O God. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. May the deepest desire of our hearts, your love and presence, be nurtured through our prayer, fellowship, and service. Hear us, O God. You call us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died, who now fellowship with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus, bread of life. You have sent this table to your brother himself and call on us to the feast of plenty. Bring to fulfillment what has been sown among us. Nurture us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed one time duty and our joy. That we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death from the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so the choirs of angels, the hosts on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending here.
his very body and blood. Come, receive the bread of life, and ask for the gifts of silence, stillness, and darkness.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask, your abiding presence in the Eucharist. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who calls us to fellowship and friend be upon you now and forever.
the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.